Welcome to our Thursday Bible study. This is our third week of Lenten Reflections, using a book that was written by Alicia Britt Cholet, 40 Days of Decrease, A Different Kind of Hunger, A Different Kind of Fast. Each day of the Lenten season, we are invited to focus on a different kind of fast. Thinking about our relationship with God, our relationship with others. Today, our fast is stinginess, a word that most of us probably don't want to attach to ourselves, but as we spend some time thinking about what stinginess is about and what God's love is about, we will, we'll hopefully get some insights in how that might have an impact and how you can use that for yourself. As we do each week, we do begin by singing together. And because we are talking about the love of God and how rich and how full and how freely it was given, I invite you to join me as we sing, Jesus, thy boundless love to me. Join us. Our second hymn is the love of God, the love of God, so rich, so full, so free, demonstrated to us 
by Jesus' incarnation, his living amongst us, his going to the cross and his resurrection. Sing with us the love of God. Alicia Cholet today invites us to think about fasting stinginess. As I said just a moment ago, that's not a word many of us wish to attach to us. We don't want to see ourselves as generous, as giving persons. Maybe even erring on the side of giving away too much as opposed to being stingy. By definition, stinginess is give without letting reason ration out your love in stingy portions. What does it mean to be stingy? Do we even recognize when we're being stingy? When we're unwilling to give or to spend, to be ungenerous? Maybe it's just one of those days we're tired and we don't have the energy to do what someone needs for us to do or would like for us to do. Maybe we don't have the financial or other resources that somebody needs. Stinginess is associated with being cheap. We usually put that in monetary terms, 
But it's not just cheap with money, it's cheap with our time and with our resources, other resources. Another word, chintzy, that penny pincher. Being miserly, the image of Scrooge, counting every penny. And if one penny got lost, it was the end of the world. Being uncharitable, being tight. Those are not words we generally want to associate with ourselves. In contrast to being stingy, we are invited to think about being generous. To give of ourselves, our time, our talents, our energies. To set aside those things that were on our to-do list because there is a need that God is calling us to respond to. We're on day 13, if you're following along in the 40 days of Decrease book. And in what we're going to read today, we're reminded of instances in Jesus' life when he was anointed by a woman. In Matthew and Mark, that anointing takes place when Jesus is at the home of Simon the leper in Bethany. And in that situation, his head is anointed and the disciples are indignant. In Luke, the anointing is placed in the home of Simon the Pharisee when a sinful woman comes and anoints Jesus' feet. Simon wonders whether Jesus is aware of what this looks like, the optics we would say today. This isn't the picture that we want for Jesus to be associated with. Are you sure, Jesus, that you want to be touched by her? In John, Jesus is in the home of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. Passover is coming, and Mary comes in and anoints Jesus' feet, and Judas speaks up and objects. Throughout his ministry, from the very beginning, questions were raised about who Jesus associated with, who he ate with, who he touched, those people who were blind or deaf or lepers. Questions came up as to why he was so generous with people that were outcast. What we do see in his ministry is that Jesus gave and he received generously and freely. Here the words from John 14, beginning in verse 23 and going to the end of the chapter. Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I'm going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of the world is coming. He has no power over me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise. Let us be on our way.
If you love me, you will keep my commandments. We sing songs like Jesus loves me. We sing songs about the love of God. We sing songs about our love for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus in these verses is reminding again his disciples that the word they hear is not just Jesus saying these things, but these are the words of the Father. It is the Father who is speaking through Jesus. We also see here the promise of the advocate we know is the Holy Spirit. God's presence that will come to be with the disciples when Jesus is no longer with them. After Jesus has returned to his place in heaven. These words from John 14 we hear often. My peace I leave with you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Those are hard words sometimes. And we all have those times in our lives when that second one, do not let your hearts be troubled, is so, it's about as impossible as we can imagine. Because we are troubled. Something has happened in our lives. Someone has died. There's been an accident. There's, there's just... Things have been uprooted. We are unsettled. We don't know what's going to happen next. Yet we hear the words, don't let your hearts be troubled. We do hear these words at funerals and other times when we are under distress. Reminding us of God's presence when we feel alone and scared and disoriented. This peace of God, this love of God, breaks into our lives in so many ways. It is the Spirit. Did you hear those words? The Spirit brings to our minds what Jesus has taught. Not only is Jesus teaching them now, but they will hear the words of Jesus, the words of the Father, through the Spirit's voice. The Spirit will bring to their minds the things that Jesus has said. The Spirit will shine the light of God's will for our lives. God's love for us into our lives. He will be our advocate, our provider of comfort, our encourager. Jesus says to his disciples and to those who are with him, what I do, I do because the Father and I want the world to see that love. This isn't to be held tightly, to be stingy with. But this love is shared so that we will continue sharing and this love will spread from us to others and from others to the next row and so forth and so on until the whole world hears. It is a, an image of Jesus' mission. The reason he gave his life for us. Jesus tells his disciples, the ruler of the earth is going to do what he's going to do, but that's not the end. Jesus gave his life in obedience to the Father. We know that Jesus means giving himself as the sacrifice. Jesus means that, going, that he is going to the cross for the sin of the world. It means being obedient to death so the world can be saved, holding back nothing. That Jesus gave his life for us. Jesus gave up his standing as being fully divine. To be incarnate. 
in verse 12, we see, This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. That's sacrificial love. The love that is given because someone has chosen you to give that love to. Isn't that the most amazing thing? When someone chooses to love us, especially when we don't feel very lovable. Throughout scripture, we see examples of Jesus' love, starting with John 3, 16. We can, many of us, maybe most of us, can say it without really thinking. But I invite you not just to go on autopilot, but hear these words. Listen to these words. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have everlasting life. In 1 John 3, verse 16. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. And in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, and then verse 22. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not glorify the desires of the flesh. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. Love, joy, peace, the fruit of the Spirit. Jesus came to the world because we, the world, were off track. The world had gone its own way. And there was only one way to restore creation. And that was for Jesus to come, to live among us, to live out the kingdom of God among us, and to demonstrate God's love for us. In John 3.16, we are reminded of how much God loved the world. God also hates darkness. And the world had chosen darkness. It had chosen to be separated from God. That wickedness was selected over goodness. In John chapter 17, in his high priestly prayer, Jesus prays that the disciples would be in the world and not of the world. That they would be evidence of the love of God. And that the world would see by them that God is love. Darkness and light are themes that, that go throughout the Gospel of John. Beginning with John 1.1 1, 1, where the light came into the world. Yet the world chose darkness. God offers light and life. And God is not stingy with that light. He's not stingy with that love. He offers this love to all who will hear his voice, who will follow his way, who will answer his call. Take a moment and just think for a moment. Where have you experienced the light of God's presence today? Maybe it was in an almost inconsequential interaction. Maybe it was in something much more significant. Where have you experienced the light of God's presence today? And then think about this. 
what might be interfering with your experiencing the light of God's presence? What might be keeping that love from being fully experienced? And a third question, how do we share that light and how do we share God's presence with others? Jesus' words to the disciples in John 14 tell us we have the Spirit, and the Spirit is here to teach us, to remind us of what Jesus taught, to remind us of how Jesus lived, that his life and his actions and his words tell us, show us what love is. The Spirit helps us to understand what we've been taught, and it guides us in how to act upon that knowledge. We have a God that is not stingy with his presence. He doesn't hold back. The evidence of that is in the Holy Spirit that is with us, his presence with us the peace of his presence that we feel, especially in those times when things start falling apart and we feel disoriented. And then in the midst of a doctor giving bad news, there's still a sense of God's presence and his peace with you in that moment. You are not alone. Throughout Scripture, we see that God does not give gifts the way that we give gifts. He doesn't give them with strings attached. That Jesus expressed his love through obedience to the Father's will. As he went to the cross, in his resurrection and in his ascension, and in the sending of the Spirit. Jesus' love was costly. It cost him his life. What will our obedience cost us? Maybe it will cost us money. Because if we're following where, we, where the Spirit is leading us, we might choose to make money in places where we're not going to have as many dollars in the bank, but we're going to make a difference in the lives of people. Or maybe the money that we have, we use for other priorities than just for our pleasure. Those things that the world tells us we should want because we can have them. It may cost us money. It may cost us prestige because we may choose to work for the good of others and not just for ourselves alone. Not so that we will climb that ladder to the highest rank. Not to put ourselves above others for the purpose of recognition but being focused on the needs of those around us. It may cost us love. And by that, I mean acting and living out God's love takes love. And maybe we choose to love those people that the world overlooks. Those people we drive past at intersections, as we're going from our home to the grocery, to church, to wherever else we might be. It may cost us love because we will choose to share God's love. And he may send us to people and places that we would not have, cho that we would have otherwise avoided. Obedience will cost us time. Because when we follow the Spirit and the Spirit's leading in our lives, 
Our time is not ours alone. When we offer our whole selves to the Spirit, we're offering our time, our availability to be where God would have us to be, to do what God would have us to do. So it will cost us time. Jesus' love was not stingy. He gave all of himself for others. He gave all of himself during his years of ministry. He gave all of himself on the cross. There are a couple of images of Latin American crosses that I want you to look at. And I'm just going to give you a few moments to reflect. The thing about the Latin American crosses that for me stand out is how graphically they depict the agony of the cross. So many times we want to make it a little less painful. But what I have been struck by by use of color and form, the reality of the situation is depicted. So in these next few minutes, as you look at these images on your screen, I invite you to experience God's love, to see God's love, to pray and give thanks that God gave himself, that Jesus gave himself, and to commit yourself to offering and being, giving, offering to others that kind of freely offered love. I invite you, if you wish, feel free to go back and look at those images again at another time. But I want to go back and just review those verses again in chapter 14 of John. The instructions Jesus offers. Anyone who loves me keeps my word and my father will love him and we will make our home in him. After I leave you, I will send a helper, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will teach you and remind you of my teachings. I leave you my peace, my shalom. I'm going away, but rejoice because you know I am returning to the Father. I tell you this before it takes place so you will believe. The ruler of the world is coming, but he does not take my life. I offer it for the world will know my, the Father. And then he says, let us go. Jesus proceeded to Jerusalem to lay down his life for us. If you're following along in, in the book and are want to remind yourself on page 61 of a question that is associated with St. John of the Cross. Why do I love you? 
Jesus opened his arms and said, I love you because the Father loves you and the Father and I are one. As we bring this time to a close, I invite you to get to a comfortable place and listen to these words. And then I'm going to reread for you the passage from John 14. Love is a self-sacrificing, caring commitment, which in obedience to Jesus shows itself in seeking the highest good for the one loved. The costliness of love means that we have to sacrifice our selfishness for others. The caring aspect of love means that we should never be calloused or rude. Love is kind. The commandment facet of love means that we do it in obedience to our Savior who gave himself for us. The conspicuous part of love means that it doesn't consist of just nice thoughts but of visible actions. And the commitment of love is to see the other person become more like Christ, which is his highest good and for God's glory. Here again, the words from John 14. Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word and my Father will love them. And we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not believe me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I'm still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I'm going away and I'm coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I'm going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs so that when it does occur, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me. But I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us be on our way. Will you bow with me? Father, we are reminded of the costliness of your love, the depth of your love. Love that reached down to earth in the form of Jesus and who is with us now in the form of the Spirit. Lord, we want to be generous lovers. We want to be known as someone, as people, who are evidence of costly love. Love that was demonstrated to us through Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross. The love demonstrated by him. Gracious Father, may we go out and be on our way to Freely give the love we have received. Amen. May you experience the love of God poured out for you. May you share the love of God as freely as you have received it. May you point others to receive the love of God offered for salvation of the world. Amen and amen.